In the last video, we created a basic website and started to refine it. In doing so, we added a new section to the POM. Let's look at that now. This section is new. We see that it contains a plugin, but the configuration seems quite different from what we've seen before. When we looked at plugins in section 3, we focused on build plugins. Website reports are created with reporting plugins. The basic reports we just saw were created by this one, the Project Info Reports plugin. Each of its goals creates a different report. In the POM, we can specify which reports we want. The obvious difference between build plugins and reporting plugins is that one goes in the build section and the other in the reporting section. Both are specified using Maven coordinates. In the build section, we create an execution to indicate something we want the plugin to do. We can have multiple executions for each plugin, and we can specify a phase for the execution. Reporting plugins all run in the site phase, but we can specify multiple report sets. Each execution, as well as each report set, can have its own configuration. An execution then can specify one or more goals which share the configuration. Similarly, a report set can specify one or more reports, all of which share its configuration. And that's what we did. We specified a single report set with multiple reports. We did not specify configuration, thus relying on the defaults, which are reasonable for most purposes. And that is, after all, one of the things that saves us time in Maven, the ability to rely on defaults for most things. But let's make one change. The license report goal has a property, link only. According to the documentation, that defaults to false, but setting it to true will stop the inlining of the license text. Let's try that. Here's what the license page looks like now. We add a configuration section, add the field, and regenerate, and sure enough the report changes. Note that if another report used the same parameter and we didn't want to affect it, we would break these into separate report sets in order to configure them independently. OK, so we know how to generate static project documentation. Let's try some dynamic reports. Maven supports various plugins that can create web pages from the code itself. Here's one that generates Javadoc. That sounds pretty useful. Let's add it to our POM and regenerate the site. Note that we have a new heading in the navigation panel, Project Reports. When we click it, we see two new reports, Javadocs and Test Javadocs. The Javadoc report is just what we wanted. We see the public classes and methods documented here all ready for a programmer to write code against them. The test Java docs, on the other hand, aren't all that interesting to us, but they are included in the default report set. That's another takeaway. If we don't specify a report set, we automatically get whatever reports the plugin generates by default. But now we know that we can control that, so let's remove the test Java docs. Here we'll create a report set and have it specify that we only want the regular Java doc report. And when we rebuild the site, that's what we have. There are a lot of other interesting project reports on the Maven and Codehouse Mojo project sites, as we saw in Section 3. We can add those that interest us, and they will be created painlessly whenever we generate the site, under the Project Reports section, in the order specified in the POM. We've now seen how Maven generates both static and automated reports on the code for our website. In the next video, We'll explore creating documentation pages manually.